Peace. Let's go. Where everybody there? Do you remember? We're ready for you have some fun again in it. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the delay. Today was a That's all right. That's okay. That's all right. I'm so, so That's sorry. Okay. And That's okay. Thank you for the effort to be with me at the meds. You're most welcome. Actually, first, before we start, uh, I would like to explain you uh what is the meds so you okay. you would understand like the meds started as a project uh during the corona time uh when okay. i was seeing that everyone was kind of scared with what was happening in the community all over the world and everything so i started the project with 10 guests like the season wow. And uh, the project was so good and people were so interested that they start sending me names asking for a second season. So okay. your name was among the suggestions that everyone uh, asked because what we do is actually talk about things. It's not like kind of an interview that I would do the question right, right. You're free to share wherever you feel that you want to share to, if it makes right. sense for the conversation that we are having. Yeah? Right, right. Okay, so first of all, my name is Diana. <laughs> we were not properly introduced. And I got okay. the pleasure to meet you. Uh, do you remember those meetings because of the- In a house with Yes. <laughs> yes. I got the pleasure to meet you there. And um, it, it really, I was already amazed by what you represent within the dancehall community, but that made me respect you e even more, like uh, the care and everything you were doing to, well, to keep up with the parties and to keep the scene working. Usually, right. we start, I start always asking my guest to introduce himself, and I give the opportunity for the guest to introduce himself the way you want. You can introduce yourself as Carlin Car or Carlin. Uh, I will do it. Yeah, I'll do it when you're ready for me to do it. Tell me what. Go for it. You can, you can start. Okay. okay, this is Carly, the original dance all queen, straight out of Kingston, Jamaica. <laughs> Did you hear me? Yes, 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 perfect. That was perfect. So, Carlene, tell me, was dancing always a part of your path? You always wanted to be like a dancer or was something that just popping in your life? No, I was always into dancing, dancing. In Jamaica, school fits. There's something we have as young teenagers and young, you know, kids. We had dance, um, we had fits all over and at school, so I'd always perform at the fix, but it wasn't dance all. Oh, I was about to ask that. So what no, you were dancing was, back in the days? So it was Prince, Madonna, Michael Jackson. So I did like disco, punk rock. Nice. As a young girl, yeah. So, and I would win. I'd win all the competition that I'd enter, so. Nice. I knew I could dance. It wasn't dance all, but dance all was to come. And um, I actually have no clue. Like back in the days, on those days, the schools actually had a lot of dancing competitions because it's something that actually makes me think. No, not the schools, the fets. So the oh. fets would be on a Saturday at oh, the different. Okay, so okay. we had one major, we had a major spot that was called Teen Jam. So the main tell you know was for teenagers to go and you know find something to do, especially in the summer holidays. And so they'll have dance competition at the different teen jams in Jamaica. And how did the dance all pop in in your life? Like, what what make you get the interest to go into the dance hall scene and to start showing yourself, or when you decided that you wanted you are you understand all right so my sister pinky which is my older sister 
she dated the mega star at the time, Tiger, the artist. Okay. And so as a kid, she would take me to the different stage shows that Tiger would perform. And I went, the first one I went to, I just fell in love with that atmosphere. Then she started to taking me to dance hall parties, you know, dance hall, House of Leo, Raytown. And I just knew this is where I wanted to be. Um, because I understood where I was, was just a free space to do and be whatever you want. So I fell in love with it right there. And uh, was, it, was it hard for you like to find your character, like to decide how you wanted to show up in the community, like how you wanted, or was just natural? It was natural because I was always this little kid that knows she was different and being sexy was part of me being different. So no, it wasn't hard. And with dance all, you are allowed to do and be whatever you want to be. So that space was definitely where I needed to be because there was no rules. You know, if you wanted to be naked, you could go. So this is, woo, I want to be there. <laughs> and I recognized from even before dance all that the way I was dressed when I was younger would get the attention of everybody. So I knew I had something from day one to be different. And um, like before back in the days, um, I would like to understand something because I like to read a lot. So I found a book with your name on it. Um, I actually, I will show you the book after. The name is uh, Dance All from Slave Ship to Ghetto. And it talks about your path also in it. It was written. Wow. Wait, wait. I will totally show you this. Wait. Yes. Well, this is the book. Okay, never seen it before. Who wrote that book? This book was wrote by Sandra Stanley Nia. I guess she is a professor on the cultural studies at the University of West Indies, Mona. Okay. And yeah, because a lot of the a lot of the professors who did their thesis on dance all wrote a book. So yeah. Probably, probably and I had some questions, actually. Is, is always, when I read something, I always like to ask to the person to make sure that the information is correct, you know? Um, and I read, I read that you were um, actually first coronated the dancehall queen on an on a event that was before the international dancehall queen that was happening. You, the, the one that was just canceled in 2016? There was before a reggae something that I don't remember the name where they coronate you as a dancehall queen. I don't know if this is really how it was, but I would like to to know how it was for you. How it they how you like you were always seen as a dancehall queen in the scene or there was this special moment when you just change there was a very special moment so what we had i had created this fashion clash and the clash was uptown which is you know the higher sector of jamaica for who don't understand and dancehall which is from the lower sector of jamaica and so i had put together this fashion show and it was dancehall versus uptown and in that clash we had a Miss Jamaica reigning world that's our beauty queen that was in that clash so I kept winning the clash so when the when the when the um you know the people were the judge and when they kept asking what is my title I popped up to say I'm the dance of queen because she was Miss Jamaica beauty queen and you know I kept beating her so I was now the dance all queen. So when we did the other clash, the crowd now kept putting it onto me. She's the dance all queen. She won. She won. And so the birth of the word came about. It never existed before. Yes, I really wanted to ask you this 
you are the perfect person to these questions that I have because before you know um, I am from Portugal and when I start to see the dancehall scene and when I start to develop here as a as dancehall Portugal I always wondered how this title like show up and is actually it was something natural for you it was you yes you it was like me it was me understanding what I wanted as young as I was I knew what I wanted and I stated to myself that I wanted to be a also name in Jamaica and I was going to be me creatively different unique in my own way didn't care if the rest of the world or the rest of Jamaica accepted me or like me. I didn't even know what's to come. I just know what I was going to do. And however um, done, it would be in my way and how I saw it to be done. Fortunately for me, it was accepted because it was never done. And it was very interesting at the time because at the time in Jamaica, there was no such thing as a dancehall queen or a sexy female in dancehall. It was always man male dominated and the female that were there they were kind of rough because they had to compete with the men so there was nothing sexy being done there you know it was a lot of linen clothes a lot of frills so i saw the space and i saw the niche for this particular image that i had to offer i knew a space was there and i took it did you did you ever felt that the fact while you were taking that space, the fact that you were doing something new was shocking to the people in the scene or, okay. Oh, yes, yes, I, I, got, I got bashed for it a lot because one, they, they weren't accustomed to this. Two, they learned I wasn't from so-called inner city in Jamaica. So who dare to represent that all period? And so I took the fight and I fought back and I made my presence be seen and heard in positive and negative ways when it was required for me to be so. And I knew sex so and I and I was about to sell sex. I was I was actually I wanted to to talk to you about it and ask you because on other meds I did with other people. I realized that they all have a common point where they they did the work like you. They are seen as like stars and you are a star. Of course, I would never uh, do that. But you all had like a process that no one is actually uh, related to. And it was like not always a nice process. You understand? Like when people, especially when I see Europeans coming um, and I, I see my students, I feel that we don't know as much as we should from your path because that will probably make other people that come respect even more what you did. You understand? Like, um, right. how you. As, as, yeah, tell me, tell me, tell me. Sorry for interrupting. As in any. As in anything across the world, if it's new, you're gonna be either good, bad, or because. And what I did in Jamaica was totally new, so it came with all different kinds of reaction, which I knew I was to expect. And with time and my perseverance, I knew I would push it and take it to the other and another level by keep doing what I love and what I believe in and what I was out to do. So my next step was to definitely create it, to create a dance move, named it, and bring it to the forefront. So that you could look past what I was wearing and start to look at what I had to offer. And the butterfly was my biggest positive move that I could have done in the time of me selling sexuality. So it went from one thing to another. Okay. So it was all about the image with the dancing. Okay. And it wasn't the kind of dancing that you could learn. It was dancing that you could relate to and learn. So it started to spread. Yes, it, it's big. It's big. I have another question about uh, butterfly, but you already answered me because you said yourself that you are the creator from it. And uh, 
creator, name, date, everything. Yes, so you just ask me. Uh, I, I really, I will write this um, out there because I would really love to know where she got the infos that she wrote the book from. Because she probably questioned, she probably questioned me. But as, as like just like you are doing this, I would answer I'm gone. So yes. depending on what's in there, you could ask the questions back. Because she probably questioned me, but I never saw the finished photo. Yeah, because I, I I need to wait. I will totally show you because I I really want to take this from I need to find it. You, you know, I had it here because it was talking about butterfly. And it was saying that butterfly was a move created by Vogel that was after, Vogel? Yes, that was after used it by you. And this makes no sense because from, from the moment I stepped into, the, into Jamaica, I always heard that butterfly is from you. And uh, that's why I wanted to it's not ask you. I, I think that inside of myself I already knew. But when you see it in a book like this, that is written by, um, I am not putting her work in cause. Okay. But but you understand? I feel I felt doubt. And at the beginning, uh, I need to confess that when I saw you the first time at that reunion, the first question that popped to my head, I was like, I should ask her this. But then we were in the middle of something so different and and so important that my brain just washed it out. So I actually, I think I will contact her and after I will come back to you and probably tell you. What? Okay, first of all, the butterfly was never for a man. Yes. And if, if Bogle had created this, like, oh, you've heard him speak of all his dance he has created. He would have said something. Yeah, um, I agree that. I agree. Not saying, not saying somebody couldn't have said anything or didn't say something. Because people will do whatever they feel like doing. That doesn't make it the facts. The fact is, everybody know I created this dance move. It never existed before I started doing it. And with time, it spread around you know Jamaica get into it. So it was never ever questionable if I created yes or no because it just never came about till I started doing it. Yeah. I'm sorry to bring this up. It was just that Oh no that's okay. I am fine with that because you have to still get the facts from where the facts is. Yes. Anybody could write anybody could write anything and probably somebody told her that I don't know because somebody could have told her that. I don't I I can't see Bogle lying like that. He's not here to defend himself. So of let's not course. even get Bogle involved. Right. Because um I just can't see Bogle saying he invented something that he didn't do because I, I know his character and I don't know him to be that kind of person. So I'm not gonna say Bogle said that. Yeah, because you know, you know there. That, that I don't I, I never got the pleasure to know him, but from what I from what I study and from what I know and from what I heard everyone say, I, I never thought that he would do this if it was, you understand what I mean? Because uh, I know that- if he, if he told her that it's not true, so let's just leave that till she tells you where she got it from. But if he said that to her, it's not true. Anyways, so as you said, he's not here to defend, but I will sure, for sure, write her an email and I will uh, send you back the info because I really right. think that it's something that you really need to know, yeah. especially because... Well, I've never heard that. I've never even heard that before, so I guess it's not even relevant, but you should yeah. ask her where she got that. Yeah, I, but I've I, never I even heard to, it before. I want to ask because this is a book that is available on Amazon. And uh, it's actually, imagine if you're new into the scene and my, it might be true talk to you. Yes, my luck was that this book was offered to me in Christmas. And I was already in the scene. So when I read it, I, not, not in Christmas, sorry, 
like summer before I went to Jamaica. And when when I when I read I read that part and then I was with in Jamaica in 2019 when I got to see you and everything and I, in my head nothing was making sense and I was questioning the trueness of it because from what I know and also being a woman within the scene everyone talks about Carleen Smith and the dance of Queen Carleen and how Butterfly created such a revolution within the female scene no, so that's why I brought it out. I'm sorry, I didn't want to make you feel bad. No, no, not at all. Because I always say, if you're not important, then nobody speaks about you. So yeah, I'm okay with that. Luckily, I'm alive, so I could defend or explain or you know tell you what the fact is. But I'm not no way offended by that at all. There has been worse things said about me, and I'm fine. True. Yeah, that doesn't bother me whatsoever. So it doesn't take away from me being the first and original queen of that. So it doesn't take away. So that's all. I have curiosity about one thing. Did you felt, when did you felt that the, the scene started something, this new thing that you were bringing? Like this new sexiness, this new part, like, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you now. Um, I was I was saying, like during the years when you start showing up and after all those reactions that people gave to you, when you when you felt that actually dancehall was giving you your space, like that people were actually looking up to you and seeing like, okay, this is the thing, and we will show respect because this is huge what she is doing. I think as the years went by and I recognized that I held my head up and although I was dressed sexily, um, I had respect for myself. And so with the years going into it and they recognized that, you know, this girl was something else and my life and my job was two different things. I think it just started to grow and I would do a lot of positive things um, in my country. And then I started to go on tour with Shakadima Sampaya, sending a love of that all and sexiness. And I recognized that, oh, you only could look at her, you couldn't touch her. It started to build. And that's really from the day, I think it's from I started in 92. And as it came into power that people started to know about me, seeing the Murder, She Wrote video, seeing the, the Mega Banton video, seeing the, all the videos, the Butterfly videos, and it kept growing. I think, you know, my respect kept going with it. Yeah, I was, I was actually, because, you know, sometimes you are doing so great things and you feel that the community is not actually with you. I don't know if you felt it already. No, because I didn't do it for community. I do it for country. It was bigger than a community. I had no community. My only community was dance hall. So, you know, dance hall is wide and vast here in Jamaica. It comes from Kingston to Moran Point to the Grill Point. So it was everywhere that I would take it. Then it went from Jamaica to overseas. You know, taking it first in the diaspora to New York, to Florida, to the different places. Then it went to London, Europe, Italy, Spain, Japan. And so it kept growing and I kept pushing it as I was going along that this part of dance all is not the sexy part. Then you had musician coming in with me joining. Then you have Patro, who was now an artist that was taking on the sexiness and, and, and going with it. So it was spreading like wildfire. There was no turning back. And, you know, I kept riding with it and taking it to the different points with different appearance, different looks. So there was no turning back. It was now out in the open and everybody could see that dance all has a sexy part of it. And it's me. Yes. You're inspired. How do you feel by the fact that you inspired, like, so many women around the world? Like, oh, wow. That's, that sometimes can go to my big head. <laughs> yeah, that I feel great. I, I love the fact that I have made my mark in history, in my country, and around the world. Again, representing Jamaica. I'm not being anything else but dance all queen from Jamaica. So, yeah, I feel great. 
Yeah, because, you know, I knew, I like to observe. And um, the fact that I was with so many women from so many different places and, and so on, I always see that actually they see in dancehall and they see in you like a way of them to accept themselves as a woman. It's like, yeah, you, you have to accept yourself first before you want anybody else to accept you. So if you think something is wrong or not complete, complete that before you come to anybody else to accept you. Yeah, I feel, I feel that uh, when people start looking at your work, like uh, I'm not saying because there are always newcomers and always new people joining and always new people looking to Jamaica and everything. And I really feel that when these new people start looking at your work, especially when they are women, um, what I've been seeing is that their whole life changes because there's a new perspective of how being a woman can be and how strong and empowered that can be to you yourself, you understand? Did you always knew that you had that strength with you and you? Because what you did was like... Yes, I did, because um, my mother was that kind of character, very determined, very strong, and my family allowed me to be whoever it is I wanted to be, and accepted it, so... As I said, I've always important. very, very important. I've always been, I have a lot of sisters, no brothers. So I have nine sisters. Yes. And um, yeah, I like, um, yes. and you know, that's nine different personalities, 10 of us, and we each had our own little way. And they never ever wanted me to be like my other sisters. They, they let me be me. And I was always different, always different. Always. That is, that is actually so, amazing. And uh, I'm sorry to interrupt yes. you. No, so the support came from an early age when I used to color my hair and cut up my hair and pierce up myself. Nobody said, okay, you need to be like your oldest. I'm second to last. So you can imagine, I had a lot to look up to. I had eight others to look up to. Yes. And none of them were like me. And nobody changed that for me. As I said, they, they more encouraged me to just be you. That is actually I love to dance. I love to dance then and be sexy and stuff. And they just let me be. That is actually amazing. And it's, it's, it's so nice to hear you saying that because I really think that the major problem sometimes is that the families do not support. And um, it makes a difference when they do not. It does make a difference because no, then you'd have to do it on your own, stealing notes or hiding stuff. I didn't have to do that. Yes, because you you could be stronger as you were because you were not like uh, forced to be something else. Yes, true. And how you feel uh, when you look through the evolution? Uh, or when, you, when nowadays you look back and you look to dancehall scene and to Jamaica and overseas and you see the evolution of women within dancehall, like their space and everything around them. There is none other like me and I'm going to brag on that. I love that it has, it has globalized and it has spread widely. I still wish there was more done to whoever wears the crown. Um, each its own, and I don't expect anybody else to be like me because there will be only one me. But I love the fact that it's gone all over the world in its own way. Yes, I would love if some of the queens think of it as a job, you know, and they're they're the CEO of the job versus just something they're doing. And so I think that would put more time and effort in what they're doing if they think they're the CEO. Other than that, I love where it's gone. I love where it's going. And hopefully in years to come, when I'm gone into another world or transition somewhere else, this still lives on. 
So yes, and for that I will try to fight to see how best I can always have it be there in that space that it has captured. I was actually, I wanted to ask this, like, was one of the th first things that came to my mind, because um, this is how I see it. I always saw the title of, of, of a dancer queen as the one with the responsibility, you know, like, uh, because, because you have a title, so then you need to show it, you know, and, uh, and, and sometimes I feel that people take it lightly. Yes, they do. Some, some girls do. And as I've always said that when you wear a crown, that's one of the highest honor you can choose to live up to somebody giving it to you. But I guess sometimes how it's given to them, it was never honorable. So I don't think they think it's that important. And that's my view on what I've seen. So I think if it's given to them in a different fashion or manner, they might think it's more worthy of it. I mean, so, it's the behavior will be different. Yeah. And uh, one thing, like, as you said, it was very nat natural for you to say that you were dancing with, and, and that's how it came to you, and that's how actually people here to talk about it, you know? And how you felt after, when you start seeing competitions to actually give this title of dancehall queen to other women like you understand what i mean yeah yeah i love that the competition was being held because if if it stopped it would have died out to a different level i don't think you would be interviewing because you wouldn't have any interest so i love that the competition I mean, it didn't continue the way I did it, but it still continued. And the title was being spread on. So for that, I am grateful. This is why I am still in existence of not only the things I continue to do, but because of what's out there. So yeah, it, it was needed. And I'm happy it's there. Yeah, I, w I wanted to ask you this because as it, as, it, as it was something so special, so you, so... Uh, it was a fire. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. As was like kind of a part of you coming out, you understand, with that dance of queen name. It was, when I see it like this, it's something very personal to you because it's a part of you that will live on forever. Yeah, it is personal to me. It's very personal to me. So sometimes, as a mother, not everything your children do, you're going to like. But those still are your children. So I put it in that term, you know. There are sometimes I really want to punish some of my children because they're not behaving or doing the things I would like them to. And so, yes, that there is always a part of me that would like to correct that something that a dance open over the years has done. But that's part of life. You know, no child is going to be how their parents want them to be all the time. You you struck to them and the rest is on them. So, yeah, there, there are times I want to slap a few of them. <laughs> to make them start, to yeah, it's, 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 nice, it's nice to talk these things because I really think that... Um, I have, I have a theory, actually. I think that, <laughs> you know, I read and I like to observe and I like to know. So I actually have the knowledge with me. And uh, I think and I believe that someone with knowledge is capable of talking and defend herself in a different way. So I have a theory that the problem right now, what is happening, Maybe, I don't know if on the dance of Queen feel too worldwide talking, is that we always start with the practical part. We always start dancing, we always start learning and busting the move, then we don't learn about what was before. Like in school, for instance. Like kids go to school, primary school, secondary school, high school, and then university. And only after years, they start practicing what they study their whole life. And these... Because, yeah, because, what, because what happened, it comes with a competition. It's full stop. 
And so the only aim is to go to whatever that competition has to offer or want from the girls. So the competition is where the problem comes from sometimes, where it's only offer but so much. So she, the, the persons, the women who are going, or the girls who are going into the competition, don't need to do anything on it. They just think it's dancing and dress sexy and just going to the competition. So the competition sometimes is at fault. It's, it happens one night and that's the beginning and the end. Can I dare to ask you what you think that would be a proper competition like to, to, to actually choose the right person to give that title? So, like most competition, there are questions and answers. There is none in dance or competition. There was when I did it. Um, and the knowledge should be focused on the, the, the surrounding of dance or And do it in stages. So, have dance, dress, presentation, or knowledge, and take it from there. She don't need a degree. She doesn't need to have a degree, but she needs to have an understanding of what she's representing. So if, let's say, Miss Portugal, yeah. you're going to have to dance with a queen, have section, have section and wind it down to eliminations to you final, the final night, like every other competition in the world, where you have section to eliminate who you think isn't viable to wear the crown that or the competition that you're doing. Um, not because it's dancing mean it has to be tasteless. So that's what I would do. As in every other thing, there's a section for presentation that means the way she's dressed. Look at the history and add it to that section of the competition. Look at her knowledge that she knows about. And there must be certain dancing that has to be done. Okay. Uh, that's that's my view of the competition. Of course. And it would break it down from just going on your head and flipping and going crazy on the stage. So whoever is most acrobatic might win, not necessarily the person who is worthy to be the queen. So if you have segments of it that you have, like let's let's just say Miss Miss World, she has to she has like 15 sections section that she must meet at least 10 of them so do dance all queen in the same thing and you get a better response for who wins the title you know um this this is fun to share with you because you will probably laugh when i say this like when i enter into the 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 scene and uh especially now when i look to my students all of them think that be a dance all queen they need to go hard on the acrobatic part. It is right. it has been so spread. Because that's all that shows, and that's how most of the queen has won. So you can't blame them based on it's a dancing competition of a different nature in the millennium. So as I said, this is why when they win, nothing happens. Because you only can do that for so much. And there's every other girl who can do that. So the queen does not stand out amongst anybody else. Okay. So in the competition, they should at least have six events to make them appear in after the competition. Just like a Miss Beauty Queen Anywhere Festival Queen song, there is places for them to go. This is my opinion, just my opinion. Before they even before they even have a competition, they should have at least six appearances for them to do after they have won. So there is nothing, they're on their own. They get this title and they're on their own. There is nothing else for them to continue this title. So you think that maybe the fact that maybe if the, the organizers of the competitions will structure it in a different way, the girls will feel more educated within it. Yes. Yeah, I was I was actually wondering this because um, unfortunately there is no international dance of queen anymore, and I would like to ask you how you feel about it because I never understood it, so I can't even give an opinion. 
I just hear about it and you know you get to see clippings and if you want. So I can't even speak about it. Um, but it can be done. It has to be done differently to capture what the essence of the dance of you is. And this is from my point of view. So we can continue to, you know, make sense. You understand, right? Yes, of course. You know, because so, I'm sorry. In the future, we'll in the future I think we somebody will try to bring it back and do it correctly. Did you ever felt that you wanted to bring it back? <laughs> no, because I'm gonna be the one who's gonna try to make it as closer to what I represent as possible and um, it's already gone through the window where that's going to be a lot of work. And right now, I don't have the time for that work. So probably I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I've, I've thought about it, but just know I didn't want to do it. You know, you think of things and say, oh, no. No, 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 no. and it's okay. It was just a question, you know, because it, it is okay for you to have a choice if you want to put your energy to do it but you already contribute so much to the development of it that you actually don't even need to be thinking if you want or if you need to you know someone will actually do it i believe i hope so no i thought of i thought of it when i saw that it wasn't being done correctly in my book so i did think of it but i was so caught up back in other things that i was doing i knew i didn't have the time then but guess what i'm still young and a day might come when i choose to yeah, and um, you know why why I brought this question because there is still dance queen competitions going worldwide. Of course, of course. And, um, Even in Jamaica, it's just not as international anymore. So each place have their different you know competition, yes. and that's good. Yes, that's good. I was actually uh, the um, you you. You probably know uh, dance queen Ale Vanille from Italy. Yes, I do. I've met her. Um, and uh, she started with a very... And from Poland and from Aga. Spain, yes. Spain, and Irie. Dance queen yes. Irie Queen. And then yes. from uh, Poland, dance queen Aga. She's from Jamaica right now. And I, I met the dance queen so you know I keep meeting every now and then a few of them and I know several from Jamaica that's all Queen Cher that's all Queen Akeisha you know a couple of the other representatives um, Renee 630 Chini Unique Kimiko so I know a few um, Latanya I know a few of the other dancer representatives here so yeah I, I, I try to keep in touch you know, with the girls around the world and of course out of Jamaica. Yeah. And um, let me ask you this. How you think uh, that, like right now, the dance hall queen, uh, the dance hall queen competitions worldwide are still going, but with the corona thing, everything stopped. Like, yeah, everything stopped. How you see it? Oh, you see and dance hall, dance hall is a space that needs people. So it's kind of difficult when it's not there for you to be with people. So it's not the same. Hopefully we'll get back together sooner than we want. And the world at large, especially Jamaica, can go back to their entertainment because dance hall need to be with each other. It's not, it's not a virtual event at all. It doesn't work well for us. Yeah, because, we need to be with each other. Yes, but then we have, uh, and that's why I was bringing it, because I would like to know your opinion, like how you think that this can affect it, like on the long term, you know? Uh, I, I, I am not waiting on that. I'm hoping that the solution will come quicker okay. to the problem than we hope because as i said dance all need people to be i mean we could always do virtual things and try to do them as best as possible but it's not the same so hopefully this is not a long-term 
um, solution. But if it is, I would have to grasp it and see how best I can fit it. That makes sense. Uh, you know, this was actually. You know, I I had a um, I had planned this before. I had a show that I did on Instagram and 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 and, and internet TV. So I was prepared. This is 2017 that I started this. So yeah. yeah it's, but it's just not the same when you're partying and want to extend that kind of energy. It's not the same. Yeah, it was a different thing because you were creating it on like a live session and you would, were actually sharing and there were people I was actually able to see uh, some of them and um, and it, it was a different intention on what you were doing you know right like, the, in the intention was to have whoever I'm interacting with be there with me but the rest of the world could watch so it was if I'm having you as my special guest, I would want you next to me, and the rest of the world could then look on. But the interaction would be me and whoever is there on set to be together, and then the rest of the world didn't have to fly into Jamaica to still see our our um, culture. Yeah. Like what? What came to your mind? What made you decide that you would do that in 2017? Um, growth of, of very, you know, so futuristic. <laughs> well, I had a talk show in Jamaica before, a successful one called Our Voices, and that was on Main Street TV. Um, it was on CBM TV in prime time in Jamaica, and we did. We had different issues. Um, we dealt with our culture. Or, or good and bad issues that affects my country. And so I knew right there and then what, what to do. Then I did entertainment on radio. And so I was always in the field to carry through and to still spread dance all and keep me current with dance all and the people who love dance all. So it was easy you now when new, um, new, new venture into space, which was now the internet, and I felt like you could see whoever I had on my sofa to be in a different light, than a structured light. Because, you know, when you do mainstream, you have to be careful in how you speak, what you say. And so my freedom, again, was being in dance hall space and to be free. So if we wanted to ask somebody about their private sexual life, it was for them to discuss it or not discuss it in the freedom of that space. So you would learn your favorite personality, artist, dancer, you know, to get to see them in a different light. So really and truly, that's where that was. And because the internet was where everything was happening, I, I was happening with you. True. Uh, I didn't know you actually had a talk show. <laughs> That was new yes. for me. So you can go, you can go on YouTube. Is YouTube right? Um, our uh, voices, dance all queen, our voices. Can you say the name again? I will totally go and see it. It's, it's. I think it's um, dance all queen, Carlene, our voices. I'm not. Yeah, our voices, dance all queen, Carlene. It's. I will. I will so watch, and if I don't get it, I will text you yeah i'll send you what i'll do i'll send you the direct link okay um, when I come. like so four four or five episodes i uploaded four or five episodes on it to you know get back to you but i so caught up in doing other things and then the coronavirus came it's on hold but you can still watch those like okay. and share just the same yeah yeah um how was for you how did that came to your life like, how did the opportunity of being on the talk show on, on Main Street TV, you understand? Right. right. Again, I have an influence here. And so, you know, there's always, I did commercials. I did appearance in, in shows here. So it's my image that I created still had value and volume. So from that came my talk show. Oh, that makes sense. You know, it's actually, um, when you talk about it like this, 
makes me think that dancehall and what it brings with you and everything that you form actually is is respectable you know like people in your country especially because uh, jamaica was the country that gave you the opportunity to to have the program and everything like they respect you and and they actually look up to you on a point that you would have a talk show you know like on tv and everything and you know sometimes i feel that i want to share this because sometimes i travel for so many times to jamaica that I never felt, or are few the times that I feel that dancehall is respected like that, you know? It still, it still gets a fight because as you know, it was created out of our, as we would call it, our ghetto system or yes. our inner city. It's, dancehall was birthed from Kingston, Jamaica and our lower sector of society. So it would always have that stigma onto it. So let's not pretend it still gets a fight because of where it originated from. Where it is today, of course, is wide and all over and spread out. But because of where it originated from, it still has that bittersweet taste onto it. So sometimes, you know, it's not always good. We use words that's really derogatory to women, to our lifestyle where, you know, there's always going to be something that's not accepted. So that's, it's not like it's perfect. And so we'll get a fight. But usually anything that's different gets a fight. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the reason why sometimes you don't get the chance to see it. And then most times when the foreigners come to Jamaica, they go straight into dance all the events, not dance all the culture. Because we have a museum that you can go downtown and learn more dance all. You know, it's origin. It's a sprung off of the ska, rock steady. Um, What's the name of the museum? Reggae. Oh, I, I was there already. Yeah, the museum downtown. Don't remember the name. Um, yeah. So there is a lot of things that tells you more on dance all in Jamaica. But as I said, tourists or, or, or the foreigners who love dance all comes and goes straight only into the dance hall venues. Into the and classes. that's not the starting. Yeah. You know, I actually think that that happens because, as I told you, we start with the practice. It, it happens because that's the only way you learn of the culture, so you keep it in there, right? Which is not wrong, because from there, you go to a dance hall, you don't go for anybody teaching you anything but dance move and new songs. So, you know, that space wouldn't be putting certain um, elements of dance hall to you. You're going to just see the fun side of it, the music and the dance, and the way people dress and the way people act in that space. So sometimes that's just it's 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 not anybody's fault it's how it's set up so you're going to come to go there for the fun part and i mean only if you're interested and want to do more when you're going to seek for knowledge as it's there. Yes, i agree with that i agree with that because uh, actually i was lucky enough to be brought to jamaica by um maybe you don't know her but i will still say her name but she's known as Swaggy Maggie, and um, she's from Ger she's from Germany, and she she brought me to Jamaica. And she's very focused on the knowledge part and everything. So on my first trip to Jamaica, because it was a trip, and she was holding she was holding it, and she was taking it. We were going to museums. We were having the dance classes, yes, but we were still going to museums and having lectures and having conversations. And that was what made me start studying it more. And then I realized that I needed to talk to you guys to understand what I was studying was correct. You know? I was actually, I would like to, to, um, to ask you something. Because this is a very, what can I say? Sometimes it's difficult for me to explain how though the lyrics had some words that, as you said, that are very strong to females and everything, I never felt, uh, 
how, how can I say, valued the music. I always felt empowered, and I always felt that the music makes me feel good and strong and sexy, and you know, like that I want to show everything. But sometimes it's difficult for people to understand, especially when they are coming into the dance hall or starting to listen to dance hall to understand how that brings empowerment women instead of making them feel objects. How you well as again it's it's each viewing is different. So you see something, I see something, somebody else sees something, but the real essence of it is to feel that beat. So Sometimes it's not even the words, it's just the feeling of the beat that makes you move on. Because a lot of people come to Jamaica, don't even know what the words mean, but they know what that feeling of the beat does. And so I guess that's good. Yeah, I'll, I actually wanted to share that with you because sometimes I think that people don't understand, but there's a vibe within the music that is just natural. For for us here who understand all the words and know what the different words mean, there are songs that can be degraded to women if you stop to think of it. Um, if you don't take it serious, then it's just another song. Okay. By value and the beat. But there, there, there are people who don't listen to some songs because it is degraded. While there's others that it doesn't mean anything to them. It's just another musical Yes, I, I, I am telling you this because I have been noticing that people are trying to understand better the lyrics uh, because sometimes they feel that they are dancing and they are not dancing the right thing in the right song. You understand? Like, or at least they are not coordinating the knowledge that they have with the lyrics that are coming up. So recently I felt that that is happening more. And that's why I brought the question, actually. Well, they don't have to hear and understand the lyrics, but they should feel and understand the beat. So once you choose dance all, you must be keeping with the beat. You can't be going this way and the beat is going this way. And you can't be going this way and the beat is going this way. You have to keep it. You don't have to learn the words. Because I've gone to country where I don't know what the saying, but I'm dancing because that beat is I'm feeling the beat. So I think they should feel the beat before anything else. The words can come after. What would you suggest for like imagine that I am a girl that will just start on the dance hall scene? I would, I would start and I would start taking classes and taking interest in, especially on the dance hall part. What would learn the history, learn the history, learn the history of whatever you're falling in love with or going into. Go now it's even easy because everything is on Instagram, everything is on something electronic or, or or internet. You know, learn the history of whatever it is you choose to do. See its origin, count on it, learn it, practice it. And you, you, you would be on the right track. So I'd say to them, well, learn what it is you're interested in. Because if you're going to cook, um, whatever your your native main dishes, you can't just say you're going to cook it. You're going to have to learn what's the recipe, what you need to put in it, and what makes it the way it is. That shouldn't be no different in choosing that. So, so learn the history. Learn where you're coming from, so you know where you're going. Thank you. I really think that that was the best advice that, you know, because I believe and I share your opinion, but it's different when people listen to it from people like you, that they actually look up to and that they actually know that has such an important role on the development of the dance, you know? Um, there is there is something I would like to ask you too. I will not take too much of your time. I will just like one more question and then I will set you free. Um, like according to the history that I have been studying, like uh, 
the women started like in the 80s with that winding slow winds and everything and then the men came and take out the space from women as you said like no no the men didn't came and take the men were first okay the men were first in djing and sound system dance all originated with male being the head of it so it was the sound box the sound system you know different from the band from the reggae so it was then it was men and women dancing together rub and dub bubble and and it kept going that way and it just stood there where the men were more dominant based on they started it from again it was about dj you know lyrical views it was dj it was first dj and you know the dances were just people would be dancing and dancing but it was men then you had sister nancy one of the first female djs to be known um she came and do bamba and it went there but they although they were female djs they act like boys or men you know because it was such a male dominated field so women didn't start it men did okay but when it came down to the to the to the part of it now with the sexuality this is the flavor for women to be added to men because you can't have anything men can't have anything without women especially in Jamaica so the dancing would be there with the women then there was a period when it was the the dancing and the sexuality was all about women then in the early millennium in the 2000 it sprung on to the men taking over the spaces of the dancers and that's when all the hell changes when i wasn't there so that's where that's what happened and then it rotates and it's coming back hopefully where the women are the highlight in the dancing section of it do you think that maybe on that period that you were not there on the early millennium there was no one actually like fighting for this part and this space for women on the sexuality yeah, because, on, yeah. Be because when i came through with my sexy outfits and dance moves it took away from the men in in a space where if you notice it was only bogo true true you know although it was only me at first after this came a lot of dance from females you had the old crew you had the modeling crew you had the crab dancers you had the ex girls so it was a lot of female and it was only bogo who was there for the male but because there were all mostly male DJs it was not a problem you understand the, yes. the two major females were patra and lady saw who shined brightly so we needed those women to be among all the top DJs that were there you know so it was okay then it changes as you know we took a side we became mothers and we knew our places when we became okay. mothers and so there was a little break in the the the, 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 the dance all scene from the women side like uh, you touch on the outro thing, actually uh i heard a lot about of them a lot about them actually but i tell i heard more about them being related with the fashion side actually more than with the dance right. side right no because remember as i told you when i started it was a bulk of fashion it was the dance was the least of it you know was about setting this trend in how we should look or oh i think we should look and so we could own our space cuz everybody in jamaica can dance believe it or not everybody it. so it was about their parents that was the key it was you being this person looking this way and owned in that look and this group they could a lot of them couldn't dance no no acrobatic way because that was not any interest dancing was about looking seductively and sexy you know so when the person would dance you would be turned on by the the, the way they dance so it wasn't much about doing all the stunts that has been done no it was a package yes now you said everything it was a package 
and um, do you have like any idea of when this acrobatic and these needs from these new skills like start in the, in the millennial in the two well it started in the late 90s like probably 97 98 and it just started to grow from there where you know that was what you now become the norm and so everybody needed to do it yes because I, as, as nobody came original to create their own identity, you know, in the space that's already there to show, well, you did this, but I want to do this. So it just kept adding on and adding on and people wanted more. So the more dangerous it became, it's the better for the, the girl who's doing it. So they kept, they learned that and they just kept doing it. Yes. Um, if you, like, we, we are reaching the end of it. Um, if you had to give like an advice like thinking about everything that we are living now actually on a worldwide perspective and you as a dancehall queen Carleen that you are and I believe that the right now with these stopped competitions with these travels cancelled to Jamaica and everything there are a lot of girls that would actually be waiting on some words like to know what they should do and i know that you really would tell them to learn the story but how you think that, that they should keep motivated and that they should well, focus my, on it my view is for them to wait to see where the world is going and then change and go with it because going on instagram and going on youtube or whatever else if it's not going to pay you it's just fun so if you're okay with fun, that's fine. But I would say if it's your job, put it together and wait for it. Yeah, that makes Don't sense. sell yourself short of just wanting to be in the space that's available. Wait for it. You said something very beautiful, not to be on the space that's available. Yes. Like that yeah, makes don't, sense don't, because- don't, don't just take it because that's what's there you know do what you think you need to do and if that's not what you think you need to do wait for it it will come back and i mean if you are worthy you'll still be current yeah i so really yes thank you for your words because that is really inspiring what you just said because sometimes i think that people are in a rush you know like in a rush don't be nervous it's, 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 it's going to be there and there and there and there. And I mean, if you think you're, you're waiting in vain, then do what you think you need to do. But I think you should wait. Thank you so much. I would, I would yes, actually, actually want to ask you something. If there's nothing to do with this, I will not tell you time. But I'm studying, actually, dance hall. I had the opportunity of doing a master thesis here in Portugal, and I am basing my study because I don't like I don't like to be uncertain about the infos that I may have or not. So I didn't I didn't want to waste my work on others' work. So I start to work with some dancers, um, which are Latanya Kimiko, Stacia Faya, and Milatisha. Um, but I feel that I have a gap uh, on the history, especially now after talking to you and knowing what I read and everything, on the history and on the part of the women um, within dancehall and within Jamaica. And I would like to ask you if it would be possible for me to send you the same questions I sent to them. And when you have time, you can just answer to me and of course I would always show you before I publish it because um, I believe that it's a way of giving back, you know, like uh, actually my goal on studying it and on trying to make dancehall academic in Portugal is for other public to see it and to confer to it the importance that it has as a dance and as a culture because sometimes people on academic feel especially in Portugal they look to classic dance as ballet and modern jazz and 
other kind of dances and they take their time to look to dances as this one that are so rich you know so that's why um if you don't mind i will still send you and you just read it and if you feel like being part of it i would be honored to have you and to show you my work and everything no problem. What you could do, so it's easier, so I can speak versus just writing it, is voice note each question one at a time and I'll answer them back that way. Perfect. So you I will do that. Listen to it over. I will do that for sure. Trust me. Thank it's you so much. Yes, um, it's a pleasure for the season two of your vlog. Thank and you. One day I will be in your country. Hopefully. Live I would show. love to. I would love that to happen, you know. Actually, probably when it's all open back, you could you could probably arrange that. Yeah, I believe that we would be able. There would be some countries actually able to bring you because, especially now, with the dancehall scene like developing the way it is, there's the queens on top going on, and we are actually doing a work with the. It was dancehall queen Alevanil that started the queens on top in Rome. And now there is the Queens on Top happening in every country. And I set up the final for everyone. Like, I do the final in my country in November, which should be happening this November, but we had nothing and no, you know, like... Right, and, right. And uh, I feel sometimes that we need the dance of queen here during those moments. So I hope, I hope that um, it will be possible to have you here very soon, especially because I believe that women need to hear you more and men too, but especially women, because I think that they take lightly what it comes with being a woman within the dance hall. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you. See you later. Let's go. Where everybody there? Do you remember? Miranda Fiat, some fun again, you know? <laughs>